Hey, how's it going guys? In today's video, we're going to be playing an online rapid game in real time so that I can talk you through my thought process while we play. And we get the Kairo Khan. If you don't know, I'm a massive fan of the Kairo Khan as Black. I play it all the time and I have great success with it. There's loads of videos on my channel like where I'm playing the Kairo as Black with good results. And the main moves are like D4, Knight F3, Knight C3. But I really like this gambit line. This is normally used against the French defense, and I think I think I have a video on my channel that did quite well recently, called like Karakan players look away, something like that. Where I played this, um, I was analyzing a game where I'd played this, and it had gone very well. And the idea is to give up the pawn on e4 to develop the bishop quickly. And then you put pressure on the pawn. Now the difference, which I explained in this other video a bit more in depth, so check that out if you're interested. The difference between playing the b3 gambit against the Caro uh, as opposed to the French is that in the French there's a pawn on e6, so this bishop can't come to f5 to defend the pawn. So normally you play queen e2 and the pawn is pretty much undefendable because there's a pawn on e6. E6. But in this Karo Khan variation, C6 is played, not E6. So the bishop can defend, meaning we need to bring our knight out to G3 to add another layer of attack before we get our queen to E2 to add three attackers. So worth noting, the computer values this at like plus 0 0.1, something like that. It doesn't approve of it, but that's because it is a gambit line. You know, it's not supposed to be completely accurate, but it can throw opponents off, which is the whole point of these dubious gambits, right? There's, there's a good chance my opponent's never seen this before in his life. And if he has, you know, he, he may not remember because it was so long ago or he played against it and he was like, what on earth was that? Like, there's no point studying this because no one's ever going to play it against me again. Obviously, we're proving him wrong here. <laughs> but, yeah, bishop g4, I don't think that's a good move. Because I think we can just play bishop e2. So knight g3 obviously attacked the pawn and the bishop. And the main move is bishop g6. But here we can just trade. And then we're going to win the pawn back. But look, we have two knights, a bishop and a queen developed. And he has one knight developed. And we're not even a pawn down because we're about to win this back. We've got three attackers. He's got one defender. Simple maths. He could play queen to d4 to add another defender, even though that's a horrible move. But that would be the only way to defend. And still, we have more attackers than he has defenders. So this has been very successful so far. We're, we can castle queenside or kingside. Normally you castle queenside, though. Like... You take this pawn with your G knight, you castle queenside, and then you try and throw your G pawn down the board, or the H pawn, and if this knight trades for this knight once we take on E4, then this bishop is going to become very strong on the diagonal, particularly against G7, if this knight takes our knight, and if the knight doesn't take our knight, then our idea of g4, g5 is strong because it will come with tempo on his knight. Right? So this is a this is a very dangerous opening to play against. It's also interesting because we don't have any pawns in the center. We played e4, we traded that pawn off, and now we have no central pawns. Um yeah, take with the g knight. So we don't really have a presence in the center, but if black tries to play e5, that pawn's going to become very weak very quickly. We could try and go for like d4 or f4 at some point, but it is just in line with our bishop if he ever puts a pawn on e5. And this this guy is very high rated, as you can see. Like he's a very good player. Um, we're playing like just below sort of master level. That's kind of where my skill is at. Officially, I'm rated just under 2,000, like classical. 
So, you know, these are good players, and I have a lot of, a lot of success with this opening against these players. The knight bd7 defends the knight. We can go g4 and aim for g5, but we can also just queenside castle first. I don't see any reason not to, so let's just get our king safe. If our opponent plays a5, we can play a4. The bishop b4 is a common move. Often the idea is to go queen e7 and try and play bishop a3 to trade the bishops. But we can meet queen e7 with king b1 and after bishop a3 play bishop a1. And our dark squares are still very well protected because our bishop is on a1 monitoring them. But it's arguably more effective than our opponent's bishop on a3. Our opponent can never really take here and give us an unopposed dark squared bishop. That's just not, it's not correct. I think we can play g4. Um, of course, if he takes our knight, we're going to take back with the knight. Our bishop is going to open up. Oh my god, I don't know what these arrows are. Our bishop's going to open up on the long diagonal because our knight will take back. Our queen obviously defends this uh, g4 pawn. But even if our queen didn't defend it, I have had games... Yeah, we're going to take back with a knight, like I said. Knight f6, to again challenge the knight, doesn't really work, because we can take it, and he has to take back with the pawn, because our bishop controls f6. So, we don't have any hooks. Like, typically when you're pushing pawns against your opponent's king... You want some kind of pawn advanced so that you can use it to open files up. Or a piece like on f6 to give your attack a bit more speed because moves like g5 will come with tempo. So we don't have that. <clears throat> but, 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 I think a good plan would be h4, h5, h6. To try and force a move like g6 and significantly weaken the dart squares around our opponent's king. So I'm going to play h4. I don't really believe black has any good attack. Because like I said, a5 we can meet with a4. Now if he goes queen e7, king b1. Again, king b1 is necessary so that bishop a3 is met of bishop a1. He could maybe play a5 after that. And then we don't have a4. Because his bishop blocks... Um, the pawn from going to a4. So that might be a problem, but I think we're still fine there. I think we're probably okay. We could even play a move like rook h3 to help monitor the third rank from afar. That could be a classy move. Uh, I'm not really scared. I'm really not. I don't think we're in much danger. And we've got a very, very strong knight on e4 as well, which is helpful. Um, our opponent's time is click is clicking, ticking down a bit. In knight c5, I did consider this. Now, if we take, I, we, we, we only help our opponent, so we're not going to take, right? We could just play h5 and continue with the plan. Let him take us get our queen centralized I don't see a problem with that I think that's probably the way to go because a move like knight to g5 does nothing because we're not threatening anything we can't even bring our queen up to e4 to threaten mate because his knight controls e4 so we get this our queen can't really be attacked like f5 that can't be played because we're going to take are we going to take I don't know it, it's way too weakening though that move threatens d2 I don't think I actually really care though I think we just play h6 Yeah, because if he takes on d2, then we take on g7. And this pawn is defended by our bishop. But we also then open our rook and queen up on h7. 
So g6, can we play queen to e5 and threaten checkmate on g7 and h8? The only response is f6. It's the only way to stop that. And then we take, 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 but then he wins this pawn at the end of it. And we have a better end game, but I think I think we can do better than that. So Queen Queen E five F six Queen E five F six Huh Hmm, okay. Let's take a bit of time. I'm going to think about this for a minute. I'm considering the move g5. I'm considering g5 to control the f6 square. Also threaten bishop f6, just skewering. g5 is good because the queen can't take as the bishop's under attack. And the queen's currently defending it. If g5... Rook takes d2. Then I think queen e5 comes with more venom because f6 is met with g takes f6. And we keep the queens on the board. Hmm. Sorry, I'm just considering this. I think that's good. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Because I don't want to go to an end game, which would happen if I play queen e5 immediately. Because he's going to win this pawn at the end of it. And I don't... I think we're better, but we're not that much better. h6 could even be a liability in end games. Whereas here... Here h6 is a massive strength while we have our queen on the board because it's always setting up ideas of checkmate. Mm. I missed that move. Good move. Now we can play bishop to f6. Bishop to f6. Hmm. We can go f4. Four is a move. C four doesn't seem to work. It's a very good move from our opponent. It's a tricky position. Bishop F six. Bishop f6, queen d6, we keep an eye on the bishop, and then we probably got to go d3 there. Is that good enough? Let's do it. It's very solid. We're not mating him, but got a great position. Like we really do. I don't think he has any real threats on our king. His bishop's still a bit loose. His queen's kind of out of the game. A5 is the only real problem. A5, A4, B5. Can we play C4?
c3, kicks the bishop. c4 kicks the rook, but the rook can go to f5. But c4, no, c4 and then a4 still b5, but then maybe we can take here? I feel like he's getting too much play though. Not a fan. Hmm. I think I want to start with C3. Might not be a good move. I'm not sure. I'm going to play it. Ask this bishop what it's doing. Okay. Mm, I think we might want to take. I've got to play a little bit quicker now because I'm getting low on time. Now I like c4. Did I just blunder that? Can go to d4 though. f6. Mm. That's frustrating. I overlooked that. Let's play this, his ideas of putting the pawn on f5, potentially. <laughs> My queen also controls g2, which is quite useful, because the rook would probably like to go there, potentially. Although I think rook f5 makes more sense. D4, D5, <clears throat> here, here. A4, Queen, A3. Let me think. Uh, this is not not easy at all. Hmm, I feel like I might have messed this up. A4, Queen, A3, King, Knight, Check. Okay, we're going to have to do this. It's not pretty, because we allow queen a3. If I can get king to b2 or a2 in, then we're alright. But if he goes queen a3 straight away, I think we need to go king c2. And then after check, come here. We might be safe on c3. Okay. Let's do that. Cover the A3 square. We've got five second increments, so we've got that going for us. I don't know why the the headset just died. Rook H4 defending the pawn. He's got queen. Queen to D4 though. Whoa. 
before you start. Oh, he has that. Not good. Really not good. We are definitely fighting for our lives now. That goes without question. I'm expecting Queen B4. No. Really? That's a good, really good move though. I don't like this. Really don't like this. Especially with 12 seconds. Ah, God. We're gonna have to try and Try and make something happen here, but I'm, I'm not really optimistic about our chances. Oh, I expected him to take with the pawn. Hmm. Okay, but if there, then there, and we're threatening two different checkmates. G7 and D8, but he has that. Ah, I think we have to trade. Mm. Our king's active, <clears throat> which is good, but F4 is so weak. And our rook is stuck defending. I don't really know what we can do here. Because taking on f4 can't with check. Maybe? Maybe we can just shuffle. Maybe we can just shuffle. We're gonna have to give that up. Then try and activate the rook. He's got a pass pawn now though, and he's up two pawns. Which is not good. Really not good. King here. Gonna have to go there. If we can try and take one of these pawns and push, we might have a chance. But it's so tough to get to those pawns. And his pawn is gonna run very quickly. Rook f6 defends this. Then we're going to have to go for this pawn. I think he's too quick. I think his pawn is too quick. We're going to have to try and get to h8. Okay. Here, rook here though to go there. All that. That works. He's going to come to a1. I think this is over. Because he's just going to push these pawns. Or do that. Yeah, no. That is. That's tough. I think we've lost. Don't really have any moves. <laughs> like, 
This is pretty dire. Yeah, just out of moves. No, yeah, this, this is over. That is so frustrating because we I thought we had such a nice position. Like, yeah, this is plus 1.2. I thought we played this quite well. We're playing a lot of the right moves. H6 is correct. We wanted this straight away, but after F6, it wants to do this. What? And after this? It just thinks this is winning. I guess our rook's coming to the seventh rank and there's nothing black can do. I guess I underestimated that. G5 is still good. This is still okay. D3 is wrong. Yeah, I, I, I just hung G5. I, I just completely hung it. See if we had any chances, though. Our opponent played very accurately here. Yeah, Queen F6 just saves him, and then this endgame is just lost. There's, there's nothing to do. I thought I had some semblance of a uh, counterplay, but his pawn's just running. Like I said, it was way too fast. That's unfortunate, but <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed nonetheless, even if I was a bit, I don't know, a bit lacking energy <laughs> when we were getting slaughtered there. But that's the reality of playing against these players, man. Like, you can get a brilliant opening, like a fantastic opening. And they will keep going. They'll be playing the best moves, asking questions. And you answer one question wrong. And it's game over. So, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please drop a like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.